home. And by doing that, uh, we are actually going to be going over uh, what is Z-Wave. Z-Wave 101, uh, interoperability of Z-Wave, security, uh, certification of Z-Wave, and you know, big question is what does Capital have to offer for Z-Wave? You know, and uh, so we're going to be covering a lot of a lot of stuff today, a lot of materials. Um, now, so just bear in mind it, it is going to be a lot, and let's so let's not waste any time. Let's get into what is Z-Wave. Okay, uh, first of all, Z-Wave operates on a sub gigahertz frequency. What does that mean? Uh, most wireless frequencies are, that are being used are in the full gigahertz range. You know, uh, 2.4, 5 gig, 6G, you know, you, you hear a lot, um, and it's very, up there in that gigahertz range is very congested. Uh, if you'll get down in the sub gigahertz, this actually broadcasts on 900 megahertz range, uh, which is a lot more open, which also helps with a lot less uh, interference. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and Z-Wave, Z-Wave is a works as a mesh network. So what that does, that gives you the best scalability, okay, and uh, the be the most robust. Uh, the reason that is is not every device has to communicate directly back to the hub or base station, uh, which makes it much more reliable and much easier to integrate. So the way it works is every hardwired device is a node or a repeater, um, which gives you the ability to expand as you need. And we'll go over a little more of that here in a bit. One thing I want to keep in mind, I want to reiterate every hardwired device, not battery-operated hardwired device. And we'll get into a little more on why the wireless devices are not uh, repeaters. So one of the most powerful things about Z-Wave is the interoperability. And what that means is all different manufacturers work together. Any Z-Wave product will work with another Z-Wave product. So whether you have URC's Z-Wave Gateway, RTI Z-Wave Gateway, MIOS Z-Wave Gateway, you know, it doesn't matter. You can go and buy, you can use the URC light switches with the RTI Gateway. You can use uh, to borrow sensors with the URC or, or uh, RTI gateway. Every Z-Wave device works with each other. Okay. So with that being said, it makes it very easy to integrate, and also it opens up the aspect. It opens up your ability to find the right piece for the job, you know, and not have to be in this little bubble. You know, so it, that's one really powerful thing about Z-Wave. It is a standard platform. It doesn't have to be a strict manufacturer. Uh, and to bring that up, uh, you know, as a example as well, let's say you do a Lutron RON2 system. Now, this has nothing to do with Lutron. Lutron is a great company. We sell a lot of Lutron. Lutron RON2 is a is a really robust and powerful system. But let's say they don't have the sensor that you really need to get that project done. Can you buy a Leviton sensor and use it in the Lutron RAW 2 system? No, you can't. Okay, and that's because Lutron is proprietary uh, communication, whereas if you had a Leviton RF or a URC, you know, gateway or whatever, if you had a Z-Wave control system, and let's say you did most of your lighting in URC, but URC did not have that light switch that you needed or that sensor uh, or that door lock, are you stuck? Are you out of options? No, there's 1,700 different manu lines out there uh, and products of Z-Wave that you can use. And that is a really cool and powerful thing to be able to do, to be able to really have the ability to integrate every aspect um, and have that answer for your customer. Now, a lot of people that have, you know, Z-Wave's been around for a while, and there's been a lot of talk about Z-Wave, and, you know, one big myth out there is, Z-Wave's not secure, you know, uh, it's people, you're able to hack Z-Wave, don't use Z-Wave, use this, that, or the other thing. And I want to demystify that right now and say that is not true. Okay, Z-Wave is secure. And by doing that, Z-Wave is actually 
advise is uses the industry standard of AES 128 bit encryption. This is the same protocol that online banking uses. It is a very secure encryption. Okay. Uh, so this idea of it's not secure, people can hack it very easily, you know, it anybody down the street can take control of your system. That's not true. Okay. That's something that people have said because they don't like Z Wave. You know, it's not to say that nobody has ever hacked Z Wave. That would be like saying nobody's ever hacked a bank. Nobody's ever hacked a system. Okay. Every system has the ability to be hacked. But they use a you know, but they do use the standard as the same standard as online banking for encryption. So it is very hard to hack. It is secure. Okay, and if somebody's hacking your Z-Wave system at 100 AES 180 bit encryption or 28 bit encryption, they probably should be doing more than just hacking your Z-Wave. They're probably wanting to hack a bank, not a Z-Wave system. So somebody with that knowledge. All right, uh, and to make it even harder, okay, is Z-Wave introduced the S2, um, the S2. Uh, protocol, which is uh, it eliminates the man-in-the-middle attacks. And what they mean by man-in-the-middle, when before S2, when a gateway, when you put a gateway into pairing mode, right, uh, that means you're going to add a device. You're going to add a light switch, add a sensor. You're going to add something. You hit pairing mode. That pairing mode is preset to be only open for anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds. But in that 30 to 90 seconds, it is opening up the doors looking for communication from devices. Now, let's say if somebody was sitting in your driveway with a Z-Wave hub searching at the time that you put that in pairing mode because you're adding a device, they could technically get into your system. And that's when people were saying, oh, it's able to be hacked. Well, sure, if you're sitting right outside with the Wi-Fi, it'd be the same as setting up a new access point before you put on, you know, the encryption and the passcode when it's still set to open. Same concept. With S2, this eliminates that risk. And what that means is every Z-Wave device has to exchange a security key. Okay. So now nobody can just get in. It actually has to fully exchange security key and you can't have dumb devices on the network. So it has made it very secure. It is not this unsecure, unsafe, you know, uh, DIY product. You know, there's a reason why security panels, most security panels now have a Z-Wave chip in them to be able to tie in lighting, locks, sensors. And security companies would not do that if it was not secure. Okay. Now, let's go into certifications. Um, Z-Wave certification means that it, if you get a device that has a Z-Wave logo on it, it has been certified by the Z-Wave Alliance. Okay, and by getting a device that has that certification that it is Z-Wave certified, it has. They are stating that it will work with every within the Z-Wave ecosystem, so it'll work with all different manufacturers and all different brands that have been Z-Wave certified, and that, and what that's doing is it's guaranteeing that you get a Z-Wave product, you can use it into your Z-Wave system. Okay, There is an alliance that strictly does that. It, it manages Z-Wave. So very, very nice. What that does is it keeps the brand strong. It also opens up the ability to get more brands and more choices. So it, it, it both the big guy and the small guy can play together you know, and, and creates the ingenuity of creating more devices as they come. Um, so that's why Z-Wave is growing so fast because it opens those doors. Now we talked about, uh, I mentioned earlier that every hardware device can be a repeater or is a node and it works as a repeater in the mesh network. I did mention only hardwired, which means any device that has 110, has AC running to it, okay? Um, so whether that's a dimmer, a switch, uh, an RF receptacle, an appliance switch, meaning a plug-in module, or uh, a, a lamp dimmer, 
even though they're kind of module, they're plugging into an AC port, which means they are going to be hardwired. Okay. Any device, and the reason that is, is Z-Wave is very proud about their battery life. You know, it's a green world out there. Everybody wants to save energy, right? That's the big sales pitch. We're going to save you energy. And, uh, and Z-Wave is doing this by only having hardwired devices being able to be repeaters because when you're a repeater, you're actively communicating back and forth, which is taking more power. Okay. Um, Battery-operated devices are not going to be used as repeaters. And what, by not doing that, you're going to save battery life. Okay. Now, keep in mind... This is a huge, a, a huge thing, and this is what a lot of people, I get a lot of calls that says this Z-Wave sucks because it's not working. So I ask what, what Z-Wave products they have. They say, well, I've got the Z-Wave hub, which is normally plugged into your hardwired network. Where is that normally hardwired? In a utility room, right? Well, so you've got your main hub, your Z-Wave hub, with the antenna in the utility room. Okay, well, what, what do you have other for, else for Z-Wave devices out there? And they come back and say, I got two or three or four, you know, Z-Wave locks. Well, Z-Wave door locks, are they hardwired? No, they're battery operated. So are they going to work as wireless repeaters, you know, as a mesh network? No. So every one of those Z-Wave locks has to communicate with that gateway that's down in the utility room by the furnace that is normally in the basement that has ductwork, that has other stuff involved, you know, in the way. And they go, well, why is my back door working or this door and not the other? This Z-Wave product sucks. It's not. It's just, it's the same as doing wireless and everything else. You need to have, you need to have the strength there to work. You know, as soon as they, you understand that the mesh network and it's only hardware devices that can work as repeaters, you can make a very strong Z-Wave network and it does work Z-Wave works very nicely. I mean, it's a very robust system if designed or built properly. And there's not, it doesn't take a lot of engineering. It's just a mesh network, okay? It doesn't like broadcasting just like wireless. It doesn't like broadcasting through fridges, through furnaces, through HVAC, you know? If you have mirrors, mirrors are lead, you know, a lot of mirrors have a lead lining behind them. RF does not broadcast well through that. Even though it is a lower frequency, which does... Uh, broadcast better through harder surfaces. It's still only not. It's still 900 megahertz. It's still going to, you know, have some issues going through certain devices. So, pop that signal around that fridge. Put it in. A, switch out an outlet. You know, there's outlets everywhere. Take an outlet out. Put in a, a Z-Wave outlet. That's going to build your mesh network. You know, it's the same concept when you're doing wireless. You don't have wireless in a certain area. What do you do? You add an access point. Well, if you're having an issue getting Z-Wave there, take your outlet out, you know, switch out a light switch, switch out an RF receptacle to get that signal there. And let me tell you, it is not as expensive as trying to do Wi-Fi. You know, you can buy as a dealer, you're buying, you know, a good quality stuff for 60 bucks, 70 bucks, you know, if that, some less. Um, so just keep that in mind. As long as you are know that you have to have hardwired devices to build that mesh network, you will have no problem. Um, now we've been really pushing on, and I've been really mentioning that every device works with each other. Any Z-Wave device will work with each other, and that is correct. Okay, but keep in mind, that doesn't mean that everyone is built the same. You get what you pay for in any product line that you buy, it's same with Z-Wave. You buy a cheap light switch, you know, it's going to be a cheap light switch. It may work in your Z-Wave network, but it may also be a fire hazard. Okay, so just because a customer says, hey, I can find a Z-Wave product online for less, yes, you can, right? But you can find a cheaper TV for less, too. You know, you can find a cheaper wireless network or a router for less. You guys know, you know, the the Internet battle is a nightmare, and there are cheap Z-Wave products out there. And I've tested most Z-Wave products. I, I, I stride myself to know Z-Wave in and out. And having Z-Wave throughout you know, my testing facility, throughout my house, living with it daily, 
I've got switches that are extremely nice, you, and you, Capital Sales has really pr uh, proud themselves for having good quality products, and the, the Z-Way products we sell are very nice quality. But I've also hopped online and bought, you know, cheap linear, cheap switches and dimmers that, sure, they work with the Z-Wave, but they're also they're also feel like they're fire hazards. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, now, we talk about Z-Wave. Let's kind of compare it to some of the other protocols out there for wireless. Whole home coverage, Z-Wave, it's a mesh network. It can do whole home coverage. And again, this slide actually came from, this, uh, from the Z-Wave Alliance. I would put a dot on whole home coverage for Wi-Fi depending on the wireless that you're using. Okay, and to be able to do a, a whole home coverage, you need a wireless controller. Just because you have access points throughout the house does not mean you have whole home coverage because it's separate access points, unless you have a controller managing that. Okay, so I would put a slash in there and say kind of. Bluetooth, you don't have whole home coverage. And thread, you, you guys don't know, and we're not talking about the thread wireless because that's more Europe and other things. This came, again, this came from uh, the Z-Wave Alliance, and they cover, you know, it's, it's international, so they have certain ones on here that have not, you guys don't know much about. Thread is not one you have to worry about. Long life for sensors. Z-Wave obviously has very long life for sensors, battery life, because they're not being used as repeaters. Wi-Fi, those sensors have to stay awake. So the, the battery life, it ain't going to be long battery life. Uh, Zigbee, Zigbee does also have the ability to do long battery life. Bluetooth and Thread, no. One big one, a really big one, is jamming detection. Remember how we keep saying that Z-Wave is secure? It has jamming detection enabled in the sensors, in the UL security sensors. Wi-Fi and Zigbee do not. Um, there's a reason why security companies, you know, uh, the 2GIG, the Honeywell, you know, the, the Interlogix, and I can keep going on, all use Z-Wave and not other products because for their wireless. Uh, so they have the ability to have that UL security sensor built in for our, uh, the jamming detection. Okay, so it is very secure. Uh, it also has interference avoidance and a low frequency band. With the mesh network, it's constantly communicating with the devices. And if there is ever any fear and interference between one device and another, it has four other hops, the ability to do up to four other hops. Um, it always has multiple roads it can take back to the gateway. And if for some reason any interference have, you know, what comes in the way, you know, whether it's a furnace kicking on, you know, whatever it is, something is injecting the RF and or a physical box, you know, a physical interference, it has that uh, interference avoidance built right into it. It will instantly start taking another path. And guaranteed application level interoperability, meaning Z-Wave is guaranteed. It's guaranteeing you that any Z-Wave product will work with each other. Okay, we can't say that for Wi-Fi. We can't say that for Zigbee. We can't say that for Bluetooth. There are devices that don't work with each other on any of those. Z-Wave, there's a reason there's a Z-Wave alliance. It has the ability, and they're, and they're guaranteeing it. Okay, um, and this is, should be an ease of mind, a huge ease of mind for you guys, you know, being able to know this. Um, also, low power secure encryption, we already went through this. Installer maintenance toolkit. Uh, Z-Wave Alliance offers an installer maintenance toolkit uh, to be able to actually troubleshoot Z-Wave network, to see the node, to see the path, to see the strength, to take those uh, those guesses out of the work and have the, the tool skills to ma manage that. Um, and standard internet communications. Obviously, uh, Wi-Fi has that, Z-Wave has that, and Thread has that. Now, real quickly, we're going to go over a few of the devices. You know, there's, there's over 1,500 devices out there that are Z-Wave, and it's constantly growing. Okay, things like thermostats, lighting devices, plug-in modules, door locks, sensors, smoke detectors, water shutoff belts, alarm sensors, uh, motorized shades, gate controllers, uh, water sensors. Heck, there's even Z-Wave mouse traps out there. You want to... You want a text message or you want the lights to flash, you want something to happen when your mousetrap goes off, there's Z-Wave mousetraps out there, okay? 
there are so many devices out there that are Z-Wave that you don't have to, you're not going to be able to go, well, I don't have a device that will do that for you, okay, because there is one. You just haven't looked for it, okay? They're, they're out there, trust me. Um, if you have any questions about Z-Wave, <coughs> go to zwavealliance.com, okay? Uh, there is so much info on Z-Wave. Check out Z-Wave Alliance. They've got manufacturers on there. They've got materials on there. You can definitely also reach out to the account managers here at Capital or myself. I'd love to chat with you more. I'm a big advocate about Z-Wave if anybody knows me. Uh, you know, I take it, I almost take it personal when somebody says Z-Wave sucks because I know it doesn't. It's just that it hasn't been explained properly to them. Now, what does Capital have to offer for Z-Wave? And this, I should say, is today because we are constantly growing our Z-Wave uh, area as well. But what we're doing for you guys today is we offer the Vito lighting by URC. We've got uh, Z-Wave uh, RTI products. And we also have Schlag uh, Z-Wave door locks. And for you guys today and tomorrow, only for the guys that have that you guys that have been on the webinar, 10% off all RTI, Schlag, and URC Z-Wave products. Any Z-Wave product that Capital Sales sells right now is 10% off for you guys for today and tomorrow. So what you guys need to do to find out what products we have, because I, I didn't want to put a list of 40 different device, you know, items on here. Go to CapitalSales.com, go into the search engine on Capital, type in Z-Wave and search. It'll come up with 40 items with our, uh, gateways, with lighting, with locks, everything. And for a starter package, uh, I would definitely recommend you know, going with, let's say, the URC uh, TRF CW2, that's the Z-Wave gateway. You need one of those, you know. You need a Z-Wave hub. You need a Z-Wave gateway. Uh, and then going with the URC or an RTI light switch or dimmer, you know, and that's a simple project, but that gives you the ability to turn on and off a light switch or turn on off a dimmer, you know, by itself. And if you want to add on to that, put in a Schlag door lock. You know, you want to use this as a demo. What is a more simple demo but more captivating demo than a showing your customer, you know, punching the code to unlock the door. As soon as you unlock the door, Oh, look, the entry light just came on for you, right? You know, how about you lock the door and the lights turn off in the house? You know, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can show off Z-Wave. You can add in sensors. You can add in different, you know, different items. We've got, uh, we've got keypads that are Z-Wave, uh, five-button scene controllers. There's a lot of features out there. And so take advantage of this 10% off. You will be amazed when you search at that and you start seeing the prices on Z-Wave. So with that being said, let's jump into some of these questions. I see there's a lot of them. Uh, I'm curious which ones I may have answered as we went on. Uh, first of all, hardwired meaning connected to AC power. Yes. Uh, you actually uh, answered right after that saying, yes, thank you. It is only AC power. Uh, what are the main purposes people are using Z-Wave for in their homes? You know, obviously, the first and foremost, the biggest one out there is lighting control, okay? Um, because there are so many different options for lighting. There's switches, dimmers, multi-switches, multi-dimmers, RGBW controllers for, uh, for LED lighting. There are motion sensors. There's magnetic sensors that you can trigger with. You can use geofencing from your phone to enable and disable it. So obviously lighting control is the, is the biggest reason, but also for security. A lot of people are using it for security to be able to put these magnetic sensors on their windows, on their doors, arm and disarm, tie in the door locks. You know, it's a very easy way to expand a Z-Wave network or the security system. Also, keep in mind, most uh, security companies, right in their touch panel, right in their master controller, they have a Z-Wave chip already. So if you're doing 2GIG, if you're doing Honeywell, if you're doing Interlogix, if you're doing these devices that have Z-Wave, you can now tie in lighting control. Do you ever know you could say, if I arm my security system, I want my, my lighting to go off? Or if I have my home in my security system, I want my lights to come on. I want my door to unlock. I want you know different things to happen. You can do that. Shades open, closed. All of that's done with Z-Wave. Okay? I mean, really, the possibilities are endless on what you can do with Z-Wave. You know, I've got water sensors underneath all my sinks, my hot water heater, 
I've got a Z-Wave master water shutoff, so if any of those water sensors go off, you know, I live in northern Minnesota, so something freezes, something breaks. If those water sensors go off, instantly my main water coming line coming in my house, it shuts off the water valve. I travel. You know, what kind of peace of mind is that to be able to know something breaks, I'm not going to come back to a flooded house. I'm going to get a notification that there's an issue. I can actually call a plumber. They can come out to the house. I can unlock the door because it's Z-Wave, let them in, monitor it, and have it be fixed and call it good and never have to worry about it. So really the possibilities are endless. Okay. Um, what is What are additional hardware products other than the initial gateway to use to improve the Z-Wave network? To improve the Z-Wave network, there's no special tools. Okay, when you know you think about other lines like Lutron Raw 2, you've got a main repeater, you've got auxiliary repeaters, right? You Zigbee, you've got uh, Zigbee repeaters around the house. With Z-Wave, the devices are the repeaters. So if you want to improve the network, put in more hardware devices. You know, so put in another light switch, put in another RF receptacle. I mean, it's that simple. It's you don't have to get this special piece, you know, for a, a repeater and put antennas that are all over the house. Because the switch, the dimmer, uh, you know, any of those hardware devices are the repeaters. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about Z-Wave. It's great for retrofit because all you need to put it in is the power. Uh, and 900 megahertz is it vulnerable to Z-Wave to older cordless phones? There, depending on the phone, I mean, any older phone can, you know, could interfere. Just like, you know, if you have, if you have a newer phone that's 2.4 gigahertz, that's gonna, that could interfere with your wireless. You know, with wireless, there are the ability to interfere. You know, no matter what, it's there. 900 megahertz is a lot less used band. It's not, not used at all. As you've just mentioned, there are phones that are in 900 megahertz. What I would recommend get a new phone if, if it is causing an issue you know I mean phones are cheap it's much easier to do that than to try and redo a whole network or something like that so uh, if you have power surge or, or faulty circuit break oh, sorry you guys answered a, asked another question it popped up uh, let's see here if you have a power surge or faulty circuit breaker does this affect the repeater in the way of the line any surge protection enabled in for the equipment if a device goes down on the network, every device has four different paths saved to the gateway. So if one device goes down, let's say it's a light switch and you know, or a RF receptacle, and somebody plugs in too much gear and it pops the breaker, is the whole Z-Wave network going to go down? No. Every device it will see that that device is no longer communicating and automatically reroutes one of those other paths. Now. Power surges, I have not had a single device burn out in my, in my house. Um, I've got over 70 Z-Wave devices throughout my house, and I haven't had one burn out yet because of power surge, surges. They are electronics. They do, they, they can burn out. You know, anything can burn out. Um, but they are made to be on a, you know, not have power conditioning going to them because nobody has power conditioning normally uh, going to every outlet every light switch in their house. Is Z-Wave the brand name or just a certification regarding cheap internet products? What are the quality brand Z-Wave products? Uh, you know, it's hard to, you know, it, that answer, that question is a very hard one. First, one, The first part of that question is easy. Z-Wave is not a brand name. It is a certification, okay? And I took some stuff out of this slide. This, you know, this, this PowerPoint should have been another 20 minutes to an hour or half an hour longer. Um, and I did go through, you know, didn't go through the history of Z-Wave and some of that stuff. Uh, and Z-Wave actually is owned by the, the Z-Wave chip is owned by Sigma Designs, and Sigma Designs is one of the people that helps with Z-Wave Alliance. So by doing that and having the patents on that Z-Wave is to be able to help make sure that all Z-Wave devices will work together. Okay. Um, now, there is certifications. You could have a Z-Wave chip and not be Z-Wave Alliance certified or Z-Wave certified, which means it will work together. It is a Z-Wave chip, but it may be older. It may not work to its full potential. Okay. And again, this is not quality control yet that we're talking about. 
Regarding cheap internet products, what are the quality brand products? There are so many Z-Wave products out there, it's hard to say just a few, okay? Um, you know, because there are a lot. The biggest part, the biggest thing that they will give it away is is obviously price. You know, with, with so many out there, price is a, lead, is a leader on saying, is it a quality brand or not, okay? If you're looking at a $70 light switch and you can buy a linear light switch for 30 bucks, a linear light switch will work, but it's not as great quality as, let's say, a Cooper uh, a Fire Series light switch or a URC or an RTI light switch. Um, the quality is not there. Also look at the warranties. Warranties is always a good indicator on how, how quality it's built. You know, URC, RTI, they've got one-year warranties on all their switches and dimmers. You know, linear doesn't. <laughs> you know, there's there's options out there. Um, but for sensors, Fibaro makes great sensors. MCO Home makes great sensors. Uh, or uh, not not MCO Home. MCO Home makes really really nice uh, thermostats and and some switches and dimmers. Um, Dome makes really nice sensors. Um, AOTech has really cool some really cool products as well. Uh, there's a, there are so many good products out there. Um, the first place I would maybe look is the Z-Wave Alliance. They've got some really good indicators on there that show some some good quality brands and brands that are certified. So take a peek at Z-Wave Alliance because they're they have a good list right there for you. Uh, how does Z-Wave compare to OK Google Speaker? Hold on, I've got a Google Home in front of me and it's going to start talking. So I'm gonna unplug that. OK Google Speaker, huh? How does Z-Wave compare? Z-Wave Google Home, I'm guessing, is actually what you're what you're talking about uh, when you say Google Speaker. Um, Google Speaker is a that's a peripheral. It's an interface. That's not your house controller. That's the interface that's helping you control your house. Okay, so Z-Wave is not. You really can't compare it because Z-Wave is a is a control platform. Google Speaker ties into a few things and really looks at Wi-Fi cloud-based systems, um, things like Nest, uh, Google Home, smart things, things that rely strictly on Wi-Fi. Now, a lot of Z-Wave manufacturers are looking and working on creating an API to tie into Google Home. So uh, you may, you in the future here, probably very soon, you'll be able to take a Google Home and control your Z-Wave lighting, you know, just like you can with Philips Hue. Um, but how does it compare? That's that's really a hard question because it's it doesn't compare because it's two different things. Uh, so if you want to talk more, Matt, give me a call afterwards and we can definitely chat more on it. Uh, let's see here. What is the best if or then logic capable Z-Wave hub? All Z-Wave hubs really have Z-Wave hubs have the ability to do Lua scripting right inside of them. They also have uh, sensors on them. I mean, uh, have scenes and variables and triggers built right into them. So you can do standard if or then uh, logic right into, you know, virtually any Z-Wave hub. Uh, you know, so you can say if this sensor goes off, then do this. You know, if this does happens, then do this. And if you want to get more than just a standard if-then command, uh, you can actually get into doing Lua scripting and, and really get involved. And that's where the standard comes in for, for scripting behind it. Uh, are you going to carry the new Z-Wave toolkit? Uh, stay tuned, I would say. Stay tuned on that one. Okay, I'm not going to answer one way or the other on that. Uh, I can't talk about any products that we do not have readily available at this time. Uh, what are the functions and the advantages of using a gateway? Uh, first of all, you have to use a gateway. Okay, the gateway is the is the hub to communicate with Z-Wave. That gateway is going to plug into your network, so devices now can communicate with each other. And there are a lot of other stuff with Z-Wave that will make it more uh, sound, more reliable. You know, things like associations, uh, where devices are communicating direct with each other. Uh, again, I only have 20 minutes. If you want to go more in a Z-Wave, more in depth reach out to me afterwards. There is a lot more to be able to learn about Z-Wave to make it even more, uh, much faster, more reliable, you know, things like that. Um, but you do need a gateway no matter what. Is this okay to take offline as a Z-Wave 
on it, or do you have to be able to get Z-Wave connected to either 2 gig or JT? Why don't we reach out offline on that one? Okay, we can uh, go into more chatting after that. So I think you're mentioning, uh, do you have to be able to get Z-Wave connected to either 2 gig or Coolosis? I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, Most 2, two gig have Z-Wave chips built right into the controller, so you can tie Z-Wave right into that Z. Uh, you can tie Z-Wave light switches and dimmers into the Z-Wave uh, the two gig controller, as long as you have a newer two gig controller that has a Z-Wave chip in there. I hope that's what you mentioned or were asking. Uh, if not, why don't you reach out off offline and we can chat more. Do you need certain slave switches when using Z-Wave dimmer? Yes, and yes and no. Okay, and the reason I say that um, is every switch and or dimmer may have, you know, the master switch and or dimmer has the RF built right into it. So you'll notice that whether you look at URC, whether you look at RTI, whether you look at uh, Cooper, Aspire, whether you look at, uh, you know, JASCO or GE or whatever out there, you will see a master switch or a master dimmer and then a neutral or and then an accessory switch or an accessory dimmer. The reason being is one has to be the master communicator. And when you open up your user interface, you only want one light switch to show up or one dimmer. You don't want to see four light switches or four dimmers controlling one low. That's going to get really confusing. You know, and you and you see this even with Lutron or any type of RF controlled, you know, device. Now Every line has that, and what I would recommend until you get good, you know, get familiar with the lines you're going to use, uh, reach out to myself, reach out to your account manager. We can help you and show you what's the difference. Uh, the nice thing with Z-Wave is you don't need a tracer wire for certain dimmers and or switches. You know, we, there is options to be able to make it much easier for integration because they communicate via RF. So you could actually have one extra switch or dimmer on a completely different cir circuit because it's communicating RF. So very easy retrofit, very easy way to expand and get more sales. Uh, let's see your next question. I assume that there's an app that will control Z-Wave equipment on your phones. Yes. Uh, and if you get the URC door, uh, the URC gateway, RTI doesn't have a separate uh, app right now, so you would have to use the RTI uh, app, or but the Z-Wave gateway, and that's the reason I mentioned to get Z, uh, the uh, not Z-Wave, the URC gateway, uh, is because URC has a standalone app for their gateway. It can either be used through the UR standard URC app for Accelerator or Flex, but it also has a standalone app where if you want to use it as a standalone lighting system, so there is an app right there for it. Are there any products, appliances that are not recommended to use with Z-Wave electrical uh, receptacle? No, because the receptacle is just an on and off. So as long as you're not afraid to kill the power on it, it's just a simple on and off, just like a switch. Okay. Biggest thing is when you're looking at receptacles, make sure they're rated for what you know amperage you want. Is it a 20 amp or is it a 15 amp? I mean, that's really the biggest thing. Otherwise, it's just a standard switch. How are the products programmed? Through the phone, computer, can a customer program new settings or just the installer? That really depends on what gateway you get them. I mean, different gateways ha are programmed differently, so uh, some offer more customer control than others. Uh, we'll just use the URC gateway, for example. The installer is going to add devices. You can enable the customer to add devices if you want. The customer, all, you, the installer has the ability to set up new scenes. And with the URC gateway, there is a subscription if the customer wants to do more than simple um, control devices. If they want to be able to go in and program more scenes or do off-site control, there is a yearly subscription. I think it's $25 a year, so about 2 bucks a month for off-site control and advanced programming. Now, the customer does not need to pay for that if they don't want that advanced programming or off-site control. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it is free to use for on-site without you know, the advanced programming, if they want to get more involved, they do that, and that helps with, that money's going to go to helping engineer more, you know, better app and all that other stuff. So it really depends on the gateway. Different gateways have different options. 
Let's see here. Next question. Wow, and they just keep rolling in. All right. So you mentioned asking, accessing your Z-Wave system from home. Uh, are there normally monthly fees associated with the remote access? I think I just answered that one. Uh, let's see here. I guess I should have expounded a bit earlier the question. Have been able to have you been able to get Z-Wave to integrate with an alarm panel, two gig, and a SmartThings hub, or any other hub? Okay, so first of all, have I been able to integrate Z-Wave into two gig or other security panels? Yes, I have. As long as it's a Z-Wave enabled security panel that has the Z-Wave antenna and Z-Wave controller built in, you can. Now, SmartThings hub is a completely different communication, completely different protocol, okay? So smart things is it that's something different. That has nothing to do with Z-Wave, nothing to do with any other control system. Um, so that's a little different communication, and we can chat about that a little more offline. Uh, will having too many Z-Wave repeaters in a single area cause problems like multiple light switches in a single box, having multiple switches? No, it will not. You can have three, four, five, six, you know, switches all together. It will not. Uh, mess with the Z-Wave network, you're not going to have any problems with that. So do keep in mind, um, just like with every other, uh, you know, whether it's Caseta, whether it's Lutron Raw 2, whether it's Vantage, no matter what system you're using, I mean, whether it's Wi-Fi or, or network, you know, there is a limit on how many devices you can put on per gateway. And the gateways really depend on how much horsepower that gateway has, how much processing power it has. Uh, URC, they recommend anything more than 70 devices, you're going to want to add a second gateway, um, basically to help just level out that processing power. You know, kind of the same idea of, you know, even let's just say if you have a wireless or you have a router and you got more than 30, 40, 50 devices on your network, your router's going to start slowing down, right? What are you going to do? You're going to go out and buy a beefier router. Well, this, you can either go and try and buy a beefier controller or uh, you know gateway, or you can add a second gateway, as you know to level that out. The one nice thing about doing that a master and slave gateway as well. Let's say they have a big house, or they've got two houses, or you know, or a house in a shop, or a house in a garage, you know, a separate place. You can actually add a second gateway out there, and have it as an auxiliary gateway. And now it's they don't have to get back to that one master gateway. You can almost have two mesh networks interworking with each other. So it's it's really nice, easy way to again make it a stronger and more robust and larger system. So it's not limited to, here you go, this is the cap. Does Capital sell any blind shade products that work with Z-Wave? Uh, there are, we can take that a little more offline. Um, and again, stay tuned, we're, you know, we're constantly working on more products. So we'll just keep that offline, we'll take that offline. So Randy, if you wanna reach out, I can talk about that more. Uh, what is the range of device that need to be within to communicate to another device. With Z-Wave, there are a couple different uh, things, just like Bluetooth, just like others, you know, uh, Z-Wave, or the chip inside, the type of chip, uh, whether it's 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, you know, what what series chip it is. The newest series chip, Z-Wave Plus, you know, you're gonna be able to get 150, uh, you know, 150 feet or more. Uh, you know, average, normally, the best rule of thumb is 100 feet. Most houses, you're going to be definitely within 100 feet. Um, now, do keep in mind that's line of sight. Most houses, you're not going to get line of sight. So, uh, I mean, I've seen times where people go, well, it's 30 feet away. Yes, it is only 30 feet away, but you're broadcasting through a HVAC, through your furnace, through your fridge. And, of course, you're not going to get great communication. Let's see if we can bounce that signal around that all that metal. So, it's still our standard rules of RF are going to apply. So putting a straight, you know, uh, dimension to it or distance is very hard because it's going to, uh, depending on what the situation is, it will affect it. What is the ray? Let's see here. What garage door controls do you recommend? There are a bunch of different options. Uh, Linear makes a really nice garage door controller. Um, there are also are uh, built-in apps that can control. So uh, if you get, let's say, like the URC Gateway has a built-in app. Uh, for MyQ. So if you've got a MyQ garage door, you can add that app and it actually virtually those garage door openers show up just like a Z-Wave device. So there are, you, 
many options out there, and that's again why I recommend take advantage of this ten percent off. Get the you know get the hub, get a switch and dimmer, get in there and play with it and see what's going on. Um, because there are a lot of options out there and a lot of apps that can tie right into other devices like MyQ. You know, I know they're working on Google Home. You know, so as that release, you can tie that in. Uh, will the gateways work when the internet connection is lost? Yes, internal gateways will still work. So your Z-Wave network's not going to go down if your Wi-Fi isn't working. I mean, not your Wi-Fi, but the outside internet. Uh, you can still tie to your phone because it's talking direct to the gateway on the local network. Obviously, you're not going to get off-site control because you have no outside internet. You know, there's nothing we can do on that one. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Next one, how do we get the 10% off on uh, Z-Wave? Uh, after this, usually give us about 45 minutes after the webinar because it takes that amount of time to uh, get the list populated of everybody that was on and get it to the account managers. So after, you know, after we get off, give us about 45 minutes before you call in. Uh, but when you call in, just say you're on the webinar uh, to any of the account managers and we'll get you the 10% off discount. I don't think all hubs are created equal in regards to programming. When I checked, the URC hub did not support operation based on the individual pins entered into the Z-Wave lock. Actually, there are you can do a different Z-Wave pins into the Z-Wave lock. So I, I know that because I have a URC hub here and I've got multiple locks. So you can actually put in a if else command and say that if pin is entered correct or on, you know depending on the pin. Um, but you are correct that. Uh, Certain gateways and certain devices are not support equal. You know, just like not all Z-Wave products are built, you know, equal quality. So just keep that in mind. If you find a $30 hub, it's probably going to be a $30 hub. You know, um, there's a reason why, you know, some hubs are $1,500, $2,000, but they're mean hubs. They got a lot of processing, a lot, you know, very fast, and and probably better, you know, better antennas and a little better quality. So. Uh, there is definitely differences in Z-Wave hubs. And if there's certain products you have questions on, you can reach out to me. Reach out to Z-Wave Alliance. Z-Wave Alliance lives with this, uh, day in and day out, obviously. So definitely uh, don't hesitate to reach out to anybody. We'll, we'll definitely be able to help you. Um, what, what problems have been reported for Z-Wave devices being used in electrical boxes like we have here in, in our six county area uh, obviously you're going to want to account if you're using it in a, in a metal box you're going to want to count that for that range to drop down a hair now again it's still going to broadcast out the front so you maybe you know it, it's a mesh network it's not direct line of sight you're going so whether you're doing Lutron Raw 2, Caseta, Vant, you know all of these devices that are going to be communicating RF metal box is going to degrade that signal a bit you know you're going to want to keep that in mind um, so if you're getting 100 feet, I may plan on only getting 50 feet, you know. Uh, and also, even with the steel box, you don't have a steel cover on the front. You're going to be able to get that out, that signal out. Um, since it isn't sub 900 megahertz frequency, it does go through that thin steel a little definitely better than a 2.4 gigahertz range or higher. So just keep that in mind. And I think that's all the questions I got. Uh, if any other questions pop up after the webinar, Please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to chat with you more. You know, if you've got a project you want to go over here at Capital, we've got the sales engineer division. I'm more than happy to go over uh, with you about your projects, design it properly so you can feel confident going in and, and, and working with Z-Wave. But I really stress, take advantage of the 10% off. Uh, get, a, get a hub, get a light switch, a dimmer, a door lock. You know, there's a lot of options and, and play with it. You know, you'll be amazed. The more you build, the more it's the possibilities are endless. So, but the first step you got to take is get the hub, get a pro couple products, and start playing with it. And your mind will just—it's—it's it's fun. So, again, thanks guys for taking the time. Uh, if you have any questions afterwards, reach out to your account manager, reach out to myself, reach out to Z-Wave Alliance. Uh, great guys over there—they're more than happy to help. So, I just again, thanks a lot, guys, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next webinar.